Question 8. We have variable displacement, velocity and acceleration. So, a particle P moves along the x-axis at time t seconds, where t is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, the displacement x meters of P from the origin O is given by x is uh, one half t squared times t squared minus two t add one. Part a uh, wants us to find the times when p is instantaneously at rest. So what that means is then when p is at rest, the velocity is equal to zero. Now, we have an expression for the uh, displacement. Now, if, if x is displacement, then velocity is the rate of change of displacement over time. So the derivative of x with respect to t. So dx by dt. Now let's write x in expanded form. So x was t squared over 2 times um, t squared minus 2t and 1. So if we expand that out, we get x is t to the power 4 over 2 minus, uh, well, 2t times t squared over 2 is just going to be t cubed. And then we get add t squared over 2. So now we're going to differentiate that. So v is 4t cubed over 2 minus 3t squared um, add um, just add 2t over 2 now that simplifies to uh, 2t cubed minus 3t squared add t. Now, we want uh, v to equal 0. So that gives us 2t cubed Uh, minus 3t squared and t is equal to 0. And we now want to solve this for t. So it might be tempting here to go, oh, we got a common factor of t, so let's divide that away. If we do that, then we are wrong. We have a common factor of t, yes, but never divide it away, factorise, otherwise you lose a solution. So, if we take out t, we get t lots of uh, 2t squared minus 3t add 1 
Is he, does he hurt? Now, hopefully we can factorise this quadratic. So we get t. Uh, we're going to need a 2t. And then a t. And now we know the two numbers multiplied to 1. Positive 1. But there is a minus 3t in the middle. So in both numbers are negative. So our solutions are t is equal to 0. Now if 2t minus 1 is equal to 0, t is equal to a half. And from the third bracket, t is equal to 1. So there are the three times when the particle is instantaneously at rest. Okay, then part B wants us to find the total distance travelled by P in the time interval. T is greater than or equal to 0, uh, but less than 2. So, we now know the times at which the particle is stationary, so those are when it stops moving. So what we can do is find the displacement between uh, 0 and then the first time it stops, and then the next time it stops, and then the next time it stops, and then 2. So when we know that When t is equal to 0, the displacement is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0. Now, it stops moving when t is equal to 1 half. So when t is equal to 1 half, x is equal to um, let's go back up here, so we're going to get uh, 1 half squared is 1 quarter, so on the outside we've got a half of a quarter, which is 1 eighth, so we got 1 eighth times a half squared, so a quarter, minus two lots of a half, which is minus one, and one cancels out. So we get one eighth times one quarter, which is one over thirty-two. So at time t equals a half, x is one over thirty-two. Now the next time it stops is uh, one second. So when uh, when t is equal to one, x is equal to um. So this time we're just going to get 1 half times 1 and 1, which is um, 1 and 1 on a good day is 2. So we have 2 minus 2 inside the bracket, which is 0. So now the displacement is equal to 0. So that means at this point, the particle has moved 1 over 32 away from the origin, and now it's moved 1 over 32 back to the origin. So, so far, the distance is 1 over 32 add 1 over 32, which is 
2 over 32, which is 1 16th. So, now we do the same then, when t is 2. So, when t is equal to 2. Now, we know that the particle is not stationary between 1 and 2, because we found the points up above when it is stationary. So, when t is 2, x is going to be, uh, so 2 squared is 4, a half of 4 is 2, so we get 2 on the outside times uh, 4 minus 4, so that cancels out, add 1. So it's just 2 times 1, which on a good day is 2. So the total distance for t greater than or equal to 0, now less than 2, is 2 and 1 sixteenth. Cool. Okay, then part C wants us to show that P will never move along the negative x axis. So, let's think about what that means mathematically. Well, that means then that x is never negative. So, So part C, we want to prove X is never negative. Okay, so let's have a look at X again then. So X is uh, 1 half T squared times T squared minus 2t, and 1. So, if we take a closer look at the quadratic inside of the brackets, we can actually factorise that. So, this is t squared over 2 times uh, t minus 1 times t minus 1, which is t minus 1, all squared. Now, t squared is always positive. And so is t minus 1 squared. Therefore, x is always greater than or equal to zero. Go. One more to go. 